This IDS bulletin is called uh, Standing on the Threshold of Food Justice in India and it's in partnership with Oxfam India and it comes at a very exciting time because the National Food Security Act is working its way through the Indian Parliament and Legislature and we hope to provide voices and perspectives that feed into that process. The key messages are around A, universalizing food and nutrition rights, B, reforming the food and nutrition programs for better delivery, C, recognizing the role of women as producers, managers and uh, processors of food and nutrition and household nutrition, D, most importantly recognizing the role of smallholder agriculture because they are going to be the bread ba basket, the providers of food and also recognizing India's leadership role both in the climate change debate and in the food inflation debate and basically bringing in equity and bringing in new roles, new rules, new alliances and breaking old barriers to reclaim a more secure and equitable world. As it's rightly said that the global food insecurity problem, the global hunger problem cannot be tackled without tackling the Indian problem. It's gigantic in its scale. It's considered that statistically every third hungry person stays, lives in India. So that's the scale that we're looking at. And in terms of malnutrition, 46% of Indian children are malnourished, which is almost double the sub-Saharan African malnutrition figures, which is at 28%. So the current state of play is extremely challenging, but then there are a lot of good things happening. Agrarian reforms, agrarian agenda is back in the focus. After the 2008 meltdown, food has been looked upon beyond the corporate uh, corridors into the small farmers and the smallholder agriculture agenda. So there's lots happening and there's a lot of energy and traction and best is that the Indian media, the mainstream media is also quite excited about the issue and in terms of prime time coverage there's loads happening over there. When we use the term food justice we're referring to originally food security programs that were delivered, activated, made better by action through the courts. So civil society groups, NGOs, um, citizen mobilization went to the courts and said look this is in our inst this is in our constitution the right to access to food food justice um, courts it's your job to make that a reality and so they put a lot of pressure on the Indian government to do that and that means um, things like guaranteeing employment it means um, guaranteeing access to cheap food of the right quality at the right times for the most marginal and poor households and it means a, a, a means of recourse if those things don't happen. Um, I th so I think this bulletin is going to be of immense interest to people within India, to policymakers within India, to, to the citizens, to researchers, to the media. But I think it's of immense interest and importance for people outside. A, because what happens in India affects the rest of the world. If there's a a harvest shortfall in India that's going to have a big impact on food prices and one of the papers by uh, Professor Swaminathan talks about that in the in the bulletin but but also because India is is um, has this this contradiction of being this economic rising economic superpower but hunger levels malnutrition levels are pretty stagnant and, and pretty high and there's a there's a real frustration about why that's happening, both from the government side and, and the citizen side. And so I think this, this set of policies, this set of mechanisms um, through the court, through, through different programs, is going to, I think, break that, that logjam. So I think, uh, and we'll all be watching to see if it does, and if it does, um, it will be a, a really good template for countries around the world where perhaps civil society is not quite as active and not quite as powerful. The food security bill was tabled in December, late December, and it's come through a long process of 
public consultation street, battle street demonstrations and court processes. So now it's in the parliament and this is exactly the right time for the IDS bulletin to expand the ambit to look beyond just the distribution side of it, look beyond just the public procurement and the provisioning side of it, but look at some of the systemic entrenched problems like the agrarian agenda, the smallholders, agricultural neglect, what's happening to our land, especially agrarian land. So some of these issues are being discussed in the bulletin, which I'm sure will feed into the mainstream debate and which we are really hoping would also progressively influence the parliamentary voting when this bill is actually put to vote. And we're really hopeful that the ambitions and the progressive agenda around the bill will go beyond what's just been written. And it, when it's put to vote, it will provide a global benchmark of what a progressive bill for social protection for all, for life with dignity for all means and looks like.